Hey everyone, <clears throat> doing another uh, teaching video here, and um, this one will be relatively brief. It's a really short article. Um, I wrote this uh, June 21st, 2013, and I titled it, What Does the Resurrection Have to Do with Justification? And I wrote this after looking at uh, Romans 4.25 and noticing something there that kind of stuck out to me, and just kind of thinking my way through it. Um, wrote this article. Um, I, it's one of those instances where, um, and 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 the born again Christians out there all understand. There's times where you're reading the scriptures and something just jumps out at you, and you'll think it over and over and meditate on it and chew on it, and then the Lord will just kind of open up an idea to you, um, just kind of um, reveal a little bit of depth or or what you know we might call the hidden mysteries of the scriptures that you just get. Uh, uh, better understanding, better clarification of what's there, and it's really um, joyous. It's it's an overwhelming sensation. It's it's you, you you in a sense get to experience the glory of the Lord there because Second uh, Corinthians talks about how uh, God has shined in our hearts um, the light of the glory of God in Jesus Christ, and we're told over and over to um, grow in the knowledge of the Lord. Um, so getting to know the Lord, getting to understand him through his word, um, each time that he opens something up and you see him um, in new light or you see a new, uh, a new distinctive characteristic of him or you get some um, new understanding into his wisdom or his glory or his power or his might, um, it's just a, a really joyous thing for a Christian. It's 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 why we study the scriptures. It's it's because the scriptures reveal Him, and and some of the things are hidden. There's there's depth upon depth. I've often said that the Lord has this uh, marvelous way of speaking a multitude of truths in one sentence. Like He'll speak one verse, and in that verse, there's just layer upon layer upon layer of wisdom and depth. Um, and, 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 and we can spend our lives studying the word and never come to the end of it. Um, it, it, he'll just continuously open it up and enlighten our eyes. And, and, um, it's just a great thing. You, you get to, you, if you, it's an intimate thing, it's like, you know, it, it, learning some new aspect of your spouse and rejoicing in it, learning some good, wholesome characteristic about them, discovering it, it draws you nearer to them. And so it is with the Lord when we're studying the Word and, and He opens that up, we, we, we draw nearer to Him. Uh, we get to experience Him on a, on a deeper level. And so this was one of those times, I think, I, I remember thinking through this, um, just looking at Romans 4.25 and going, hmm, it says raised for our justification. And, uh, and I'll explain my thought process here in this brief article. But um, as always, if you're unable to watch live um, or you can just catch a little bit of this, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch this in all my videos at your convenience. It's King Ram 417. And that's K, my middle initial, Ingram, my last name, 417. Um, I try to post these as soon as I'm done going live. Uh, if you don't like YouTube, you can find me at Rumble um, under the same name, uh, King Ram 417. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so, so like I say, this, this is one of the shorter articles that I've written. Um, so it, it shouldn't take much time to get through it here. So this will be a, a brief video, but, um, before jumping into it, I do want to pray. Um, so if you guys want to pray with me, I'd appreciate it. How should I pray, Lord? I remember being really excited um, finding this truth in your word, Lord, and and just um, getting a confirmation from another brother um, who, when I explained it, um, he was like, hmm, you could just see the, the enlightenment that was passed to him, and he kind of appreciated that idea, too, and that just also really encouraged me, and... Uh, confirm that maybe my thoughts are correct on this, Lord, and um, it was exciting and and joyous, and and so I I pray for a new experience of that, Lord, that that we would rejoice over Your Word, that uh, we would see You in Your glory, that we would get to know You on a deeper level uh, through the revelation of Your Word, 
Um, I just I pray that you would be magnified, that you would be honored, that you would be uh, glorified in this video, Lord, that um, if I speak anything that's true or good or, or wholesome or righteous and glorious, Lord, that it would just um, rejoice our hearts, that we'd be overwhelmed um, with, with who you are and, and that we'd appreciate you and your word and we'd celebrate you, Lord, and rejoice over it. Um, if anything's in error, if I'm speaking out of turn, Lord, if, if it's just my own wisdom, um, I pray that it would just go in one ear and out the other and that people would forget about it. Lord, I pray that uh, you would just help me get through this video with this head cold or nasal situation going on, whatever I got happening here. Um, that you would just bless me and help me to work through it, Lord. And, um, just glorify yourself, Lord. Your word doesn't return void. Um, so help us to rejoice in your word. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so um, again, uh, this is based on Romans 4.25, and I titled it, What Does the Resurrection Have to Do with Justification? So just to define those terms, resurrection um, is the resurrection of Jesus Christ when he came back from the dead after his crucifixion. And justification is being made just with God, being made right, uh, being vindicated in the courtroom of God. Um, his wrath is due to us uh, because of our sin. Uh, so to be justified, justification is to have that uh, wrath satisfied, um, to be acquitted, so to speak, to be found not guilty, to, to, to be found righteous in the sight of God, to have found to have kept the law. So how does Jesus rising from the dead um, tie into our justification, our being made right with God? How is his rising from the dead, uh, how does that act make us right with God? Um, so the verse says in Romans 4.25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, ye are yet in your sins. Um, so, the, when I was first looking at this, when I, when I first noticed this verse, because um, a lot of times um, you'll read and reread and read through the scriptures, and sometimes things will stick out that you've never noticed before. It's like, you know, I've read through Romans uh, chapter 4 a hundred times, and, and all of a sudden this one part of it uh, sticks out. And it's like, hmm, I, I never noticed that before. And so I think that's what happened here in this case. I was looking at Romans 4 again, and I came to that last verse um, of the chapter, verse 25. And what really stuck out to me was that part where it says that uh, he was raised uh, again for our justification. And it kind of tied my brain in knots. Um, I was just a little perplexed by the idea. Um, because it, the idea of his raising from the dead and that equaling our justification didn't make sense to me. Um, his death and crucifixion, him going to the cross, him suffering the wrath of God, um, th that act as justification made makes sense to me because it's a propitiation. I'm guilty before God uh, of, of sin, uh, sin deserving of eternal wrath and death, and Jesus Christ paid the price uh, by going to the cross and enduring the wrath of God, drinking down that cup of wrath. So like that act there um, seems to me to be the justification. My sin was atoned for on the cross. Jesus paid my fine uh, by suffering and dying on that cross. So to me, I always saw that as justification. The, the fact that the scriptures say he was raised for our justification, that our justification took place after the cross, was kind of perplexing to me. Um, 
Because like I say, the, the act on the cross was a, an, an actual propitiation, a substitution. Um, it was a penal act, a, a judicial legal act of him taking my place. Um, he stepped in as my substitute. That makes sense to me because then the judge can look at me and say, because of him, you're, you are free. You are justified. You are made right. His, his life of perfection and, and his sacrificial death have been applied to me so that his perfection is now counted on my behalf. And his death is also counted on my behalf. So he took all my sin and I get all of his righteousness. And like that that's the, the legal course of action that was taken on the cross. And, and so I've always seen that as the definitive uh, moment uh, of justification. It makes sense to me. Um, that that legal process makes perfect sense. Um, like I say, I'm I'm always thinking about the cross um, in in light of a courtroom um, because that that's what it is. God is judge. He's a just judge. It says righteousness and justice are the foundation of His throne. That's that's the platform by which He rules. Justice and righteousness. He is just. Everything he does, every decree he makes, every action he takes is just and righteous. It's founded in those things. And I'm guilty. You know, justice demands my punishment. I have sinned against the Almighty God. I have disobeyed him um, when he lays his law on my conscience and in the word of God. I have violated his principles. He says not to do something and I do it. He says to do something and I say no. Um, I'm a guilty criminal before him. Um, so I, I deserve punishment and his justice and righteousness demands punishment. Um, the, a just judge cannot let a guilty criminal go free. And then Christ, the perfect God-man, the, the, the one who kept the law in totality, who, who obeyed in, in every aspect, was 100% obedient. Every time God said, do this, he did it. Every time God said, don't do that, he did not do it. He was perfect in thought, word, and deed. And, and he steps in and, and gives me his righteousness, places his righteousness upon me, says, Lord, count, says, God, count everything I did in perfection to his account, and I'll pay his fine. And he, and he absorbs the wrath and the justice uh, that was due to me. And because of that act, I'm now justified. I'm now right in the eyes of the courtroom. I'm now right in the eyes of the judge. So how does the resurrection, the action of him raising from the dead, um, taking place after this in, entire courtroom process, after this entire legal process, how does his rising from the dead play into that justification? Um, because in the past, his resurrection, when you think about, okay, what, what was the point of his resurrection? Um, and you'll often, I've, or at least I've often heard, um, it explained as it signifies his deity. Um, it shows his power and his godhood that he rose from the dead. He said he was going to rise from the dead and he did. It shows his power over even death, um, and the grave that, that he has the ability to raise from the dead. And, and it gives us hope uh, that one day we're going to raise from the dead as well. Um, so, so that was always the way I looked at the resurrection um, as, a, as a signification of his deity, his power over death, and our great hope that one day we too will rise for the dead, uh, from the dead. But honestly, like when, when, I, when I would hear those explanations or when I would think about those explanations myself, it was never emotionally and intellectually satisfying. I wasn't satisfied with that answer, but I didn't know of any other answer, so I just I accepted it. Um, when I think about the resurrection in the past, when, when I think about that past mindset, I always felt like I was missing an important part. Like, like that's not the totality of what the resurrection was about. The resurrection wasn't just to prove his deity and to give me hope and to show his power over the grave. That didn't sit well with me. It's like I, f I felt like a big theological portion was missing um, from that whole thing. And, and so, like I said, I, j I just didn't know what it was. And, and, and I had no idea where to even look for an answer. Um, so I just settled it in my mind. I, I just kind of filed it in the back of my brain, so to speak. 
uh, that I would just accept that that explanation. Okay, um, yes, it proves his deity. Yes, it fulfilled prophecy. Yes, it shows his power over the grave and death. Yes, it gives me hope knowing that I too will rise from the dead. If he rose from the dead and he told me that I will, then I can bank on that. So I just kind of put all my eggs in that basket and just moved on with my life. Just, you know, not really giving it much more thought. But but again, just never being satisfied with that answer. Never being like, yes, that that is um, enough. That's all I need to know about this. Um, so I, I think this part of it, this justification part of the resurrection, uh, mentioned in Romans 4.25, is the part that I was missing. Um, and like I say, justification, once again, it's it's being made right with God, um, being cleared in that courtroom. So how does justification tie into the resurrection? And I think I got a little insight through this verse. So um, again, I'm just repeating this for emphasis. The question is, how does the resurrection tie into justification? And, and, and again, we all uh, view this justification as a penal act. It's a law issue. Uh, justice, substitution, righteousness, justification, propitiation. Those are all legal terms. And they apply to a judge and a lawbreaker. And, and so, again, this is our situation. God's that just judge who demands justice. We all stand guilty and condemned before him, but Christ steps in and becomes our substitute and propitiation. He takes the wrath of the, the, uh, of the justice that was due to us, and we're counted free and righteous before the judge. Um, so with that whole scenario outline, with the way I had thought about this previously in my life, uh, the cross um, and Jesus' death uh, were specifically the justifying act. Though that appeared to be the wrath-absorbing, propitiating um, act where my penalty was paid and I was justified, right? That makes sense. Legally, it makes sense. It makes logical sense. Um, he, but here's where I w went with my thoughts the other the, when I was thinking about this particular verse. There's one more step necessary. Think, think about it like this. If you're in that court of law, and you have a debt or a fine that needs to be paid, uh, but you can't pay it. And someone else steps in uh, into the courtroom and pays the fine on your behalf. You're free to go, right? No. The judge has to accept the substitutionary act. Um, so the judge has to accept that payment on your behalf. He has to say, yes, I'll take that. Uh, you're, you're given a fine of a million dollars and you can't pay it. And somebody walks in off the street and says, judge, I, I'll, I'll cut you a check of a million dollars right now. The judge has to say, okay, uh, court the case dismissed. So what's the evidence, uh, that the court, that the courtroom has, uh, dismissed your case? What, what's the evidence that that act has been accepted? Uh, it's it's when the judge officially dismisses the case and hits his gavel on the ground. It's when your debt, that, that million dollar debt that you're owed, is stricken from the record. It's taken off the files. It's when the receipt for that debt is handed to you that says paid in full. Um, so nobody can ever accuse you again. Hey, you owe a million dollars. No, I got the judge signed receipt that says my debt's been paid in full. Uh, the judge accepted that substitutionary act and has given me a receipt to prove it. So what is the receipt? What is the evidence that God accepted Christ's substitutionary act? Where is the evidence that, that when Christ went to the cross, that that paid the fine? Where's the evidence that God the Father said, yes, debt paid in full? It's the resurrection. The resurrection is the receipt. The resurrection is the proof that God has vindicated us. The resurrection is the proof that God said, yes, it's been accepted. It's the proof that God has wiped the slate clean. It's the proof that God found Christ's act worthy. It's the proof that we are indeed justified before God, that when we go into that courtroom on the last day, our debt will have been paid. Um, without the resurrection, if Jesus would have never got up from the dead, there would be no evidence that God had accepted Christ's act. 
and we would still be in our sins, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians. Without the resurrection, there's no justification. But Christ, his, his rising from the dead, his resurrection is the proof that we're justified with God. Praise the Lord for that revealed truth. Um, in the past, like I say for me, the resurrection uh, meant the, the evidence of his deity, the hope for the future, but it was always missing that something. Um, those ideas were never fully satisfying to me. But now that I understand what the resurrection really means as justification, it has a fuller meaning and it's so much more satisfying. We can praise God that, that he accepted the sacrifice of Christ, that, that Christ rising from the dead was a God-given proof because nobody can rise from the dead except for God. He's the only one who has power over death. So when Jesus said, I'm going to die for sin, and I'll raise again. Um, if he would have just died on that cross and, and not rose from the dead, everybody would, Paul, the apostles, us, we'd be left going, did that count? Was that real? Did, did, did that really count? Did God accept that? We wouldn't know. We'd have that doubt. We'd have that 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 fear of, of not knowing whether or not that actually paid for us. Yes, Jesus lived a perfect life. We all saw that. We saw him as the perfect God-man, healing, doing miracles. And then he went to the cross uh, without a word. He kept silent before his accusers and suffered and died. Um, but then we'd be going, wait, does that count for us? Did he absorb wrath? Did he did he drink down the cup for us? And and without the resurrection, we'd have to wait till judgment day. We'd be left without hope. We'd be left worrying, like, I don't know. When I get to the courtroom, I guess I'll find out whether or not the judge accepted it. But the fact that God the Father rose Jesus from the dead was proof that God had accepted the act. It was proof that God said, yes, that was worthy. That I accept that. Here's your receipt the resurrection of the dead. You are justified by the resurrection. And um, so so that's kind of like, uh, like I say, it was really encouraging to me um, and, and, and satisfying to find this missing piece of the resurrection in Romans 4.25. I had always felt like it was lacking something. I'd always felt like, like I was missing an important part, that I didn't have the full understanding uh, of what the resurrection meant. And then I saw that verse and, and, and meditated on it, and the Lord made it click in my head that that is the receipt paid in full. I can now trust, I can know, that my debt has been paid. Christ said he was going to the cross on my behalf. It was prophesied in verses like Isaiah 53 that he would bear my sins, that he was stricken for, for me, that he was bruised for me, that he was crushed for me. He said, I'm, I'm going to drink the cup of wrath. And he drank the cup of wrath. And, 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 and he did that. And then he rose from the dead to prove it. He rose to show, look, it's done. It's been accepted. It's been paid in full. This is the receipt. And so it's it's just that added benefit um, of knowing what the resurrection really was, that, that Romans 4.25 just helped it all click in my head and come together. And uh, it was just a great experience. I, I, I really, uh, it's one of the most impactful verses I can think of um, in my Christian walk, that, that really just that enlightening aspect of it. When the light bulb came on, I was like, yes, yes, now I get it. Now I, now I, I, I understand um, how the resurrection justifies me before God. Um, so anyways, like I said, it was a real short article that I wrote. Um, that's all I got for you. Um, if you're just catching the end of it, you were unable to watch the whole thing, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, King Ram 417. It's K, my middle initial, Ingram, my last name, 417. Um, if you're not on YouTube, you can find me on Rumble under the same name. And uh, you can watch this and all my videos at your convenience. Um, I'm just about to uh, be done going live here, so I'll try to post this right away. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.